we are the dreamers of dreams. Teachers Brian Dunn and Kate Jr. Brian. From teachers to families to friends, everyone had a different opinion on what my decision should be. My final decision in the end was St. John's. My freshman year was a transition to say the least. Coming from a small rural town like Sutton, making friends, fitting in, and having a close teacher-student bond that I had since kindergarten here at Sutton was a priority. I soon learned at a larger school, a teacher-student bond is rare, which makes the transition for me difficult. So after attending St. John's for a little over a year, uh, and failing to find that connection, I decided to tell my parents that I wanted to transfer. We'll always welcome you back, just like Sutton did for me. I think every year since I've been here, this is my seventh year now, the staff have tried something new. We've made an adjustment, we've made a tweak, we've changed graduation requirements, we've added programs now. But I'm confident that the teachers that we have here and the kids that we have here work to make this place the best place it can possibly be, so that no matter where you are or who you are, when you walk in the door, you can feel success. Yeah. So with that, I'm about to send you off to your first destination, which is the Club and Activities Fair. So, okay, have a great night. Why don't you guys now over to Jim. Program. I know as either 7th, 8th graders or parents, maybe one of the last things you're thinking about is the fourth quarter of your senior year at the school, right? It seems so far away, but this has really become one of the cornerstone pieces of our high school. So the internship program is this. Fourth quarter of your senior year, I place you in a field that you want to study. And it's not cookie cutter. So what's your name? Emily, fourth quarter, senior, first day senior, you want to do what? Uh, neurology. Man, neurology. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I'm going to challenge that one. <laughs> but then I would start to look for neurologists that would be willing to work with you. So I'd immediately tell you we worked with five different hospitals in the area, whether it's UMass, St. Vincent's. Um, so I would try to find a doctor for you or a team that would be willing to work with you. Um, but real quick, let's just talk about the hospital one because I think it's the coolest one. So maybe our most hands-on internship is every year we send somebody who into the maternity ward at UMass. So last year, our intern, I want to be a doctor or I'm considering being a nurse. They witnessed 66 births in six weeks okay, in the room. So it is a very hands-on new experience. And some of the internships have been so over the top and crazy. Like we had one kid who wanted to be a fly fisherman, so we contacted an elf for a group in the Deerfield River, and he stayed there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and he would fish with this crew. Um, and a lot of the Red Sox players would go there on the weekends uh, and fish, and they were charging like five or six hundred dollars for three hours, and that was his internship. And uh, I tried to find a placement specifically for you. And then the, your fourth quarter, Emily. So this year, the students' the last day of school in this building is April 3rd. So from April 6th to May 22nd, they're in a field getting 25 hours of hands-on things that they want to experience. Other schools are starting to pick up on this and, and contact us. So this is just some interesting statistics um, that I showed last year. Um, 485 grads have completed the program now, right? We've worked with over 100 businesses. This was a cool one. Last year, 43% of our interns roll that into a summer job. And that number is actually a little bit lower than it should be because I would say 30% of our kids are in education. And that position just doesn't really offer itself to a summer job. So, I draw a box. Um, <laughs> yeah. The benefits, I mean, I, I can't think of a, a reason to not do this program, but I feel like some of the, the best benefits right out of the gate, you're building a professional network immediately. You know, you get this professional network, you're gaining authentic experiences. The experiences these kids encounter in six weeks are amazing. Um, you're bursting the Sutton bubble. You know, a lot of our kids are here from pre-K through 12, 
in this lovely community, but I think there's real value in kind of breaking away a little bit. You can, you can find your career aspirations. Um, one quick story, I, I told you really quick. One of the first years we did this, I had a student that was convinced they wanted to be a politician. They wanted to be a politician, did an internship at the State House, they went there for the first day, emailed me, came to school the next day, absolute tears. I don't want to be a politician. I would never want to do this field. I hate it. What can you do? Right? So I'm going, oh, that was a failure. But it's actually a wild success story because this person was slated to do four years of political science in college. And she learned one day. <laughs> this was not her field. So you can see this is what it looks like during the fourth quarter of your senior year. So if you do an AP class, you're here for your AP class because it's connected to college credit, but you can still do a program. So you stay for your class, but after your class, depending on when your class falls, you can go either in the morning or the afternoon. And if you're taking multiple classes, you can kind of see the grid and how it works. We essentially equate an AP class to five hours of study each week. Every student gets 25 hours. So it's just a, kind of a simple mathematical equation. Some professional expectations, another like great thing that comes out of this, right? What the kids are doing really exemplifies authentic learning. Right, they're in the field, they're professional, connected, courteous. Speaks to also the retention with summer jobs as well. There are some like weekly assignments I have every week. Students will submit a time stamp, timed hours. They'll do a small write up for me. There's a paper. And then the capstone piece um, this year is actually May 22nd, 2020. But the capstone piece is, if you have any other questions, if I can get through the whole program, don't hesitate to email me. Thank you so much for your time. So we thought it important to discuss with you some of the most important things we think, some overreaching goals. And some of our goals in the math department is that you be able to communicate what it is you know and what it is you understand to your peers, to your teacher, to other people. Um, we think it's important for you to be able to solve all kinds of problems. We think it's important for you to persist with problems. So maybe, you know, when the going gets tough, you throw your hands in the air and you find a way to sort of figure something out, ask for a hint, work with other people. Um, it's important to make connections between math and what goes on in the real world, and we have some examples of projects that we'll discuss later. We want you to be able to use appropriate tools strategically, so if you go in any math room, they're sort of like useful information that you can use around the room. And I mean, we know that kids have the internet at their fingertips right now. So it's, it's a matter of how you use your tools appropriately to figure things out. Um, and to be able to construct a, a good argument and critique you know, your other's reasoning. Like, respect the statement. <laughs> Some things you might see happening in, in our classroom where we try to make things active and engage the kids. Conventional. It's important that students in math understand it's not really just about the math, it's about the fact that you're learning how to think. We definitely take chemistry as well, and then they can um, take any of these AP classes. So for juniors and seniors, you have AP Biology, AP Environmental Science, and um, AP Physics, um, which we're going to offer to juniors next year. And uh, for senior year, after they've taken chemistry with Mrs. Hayes, um, they can take AP Chemistry. So they need to have that little bit of background um, before they go into AP Chemistry senior year. We can take a look back at some of these, what we do in the classroom. Um, just these pictures that are here. Lisa Neal, do you remember what that one is? Yes, I do. Julie, is that your class? I think that one is. It is. That's an evolution simulation where they are all birds with different beaks trying to catch fish from the ground. Oh, so the top right is zoology. We march through the um, from the tiny animals up to the vertebrates, and that is when we are doing worms. And they're trying to see if worms have chemical senses to detect things like that. For left hand side of that image um, is in my anatomy and physiology class. So this is when we're wrapping up our conversations around different tissues in the human body. 
So we collected some tissue boxes, and on each, oh, there's an example right there. On each side, the students represented a different um, tissue. So we, can buy it. we read novels like Fahrenheit 451, The Things They Carry, I just started with my sophomores, as well as doing some nonfiction with Persepolis and The Glass Castle, and finishing out with some more Shakespeare, A Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, during that time, we focus on how characters and people in the novel are being pulled in many different directions and how we might connect to that as well. And we also spend a lot of time talking about taking outside sources, research, and how that influences and shapes how we do a lot of our writing and performing of arguments. How do we communicate? How do we find our voice? How do we properly set sources and synthesize them together? Um, and I think part of the, our MCAS score results are a result of that. As you guys know, Sutton does very well on the elementary level, middle school, and we keep that going with the high school. 97% um, score in advanced or proficient, highest scores in the Blackstone Valley, and it increased every year, the past three years, with advanced scores, and we do very well above the state average. Um, so something Sutton should be proud of. Here we focus on what it really is, the meaning to be American, and what's the American dream, and it, can't really be reached by everyone. Uh, as stated, Mr. Marcucci has the AP language, and a lot of that focus is obviously on writing, reading nonfiction, figuring out what's really being said in the text, and now how do I apply that to what I'm writing? And it's a very in-depth course, and when people come out of there, you're a much better writer for having gone in there, but they end in those teenage years where you're trying to figure out what do I want to do, and a lot of the kids in that class are sitting there going, what do I want to do? It helps them start to identify who they are and maybe, just maybe, what it is they want to do with the rest of their life. And we work very hard on expository, analytical, and argumentative writing so they can put it into proper words. So excited about it. We do take the SAT and we have the high scores in the Valley. We do very well in the SAT from a really strong focus on writing and reading and um, focusing on connecting those two skills. ¿Cómo están? What do I want to do next year when I go to the high school? Do I want to take honor Spanish or do I want to take CP Spanish? Both of which are options. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the difference between those two uh, now, just to get your, your brain moving a little bit and thinking about the difference between these two classes. So think to yourself, yes or no. Has Spanish in middle school been easy and are you looking for more of a challenge next year? Hold on. Do you understand how to form a sentence in Spanish? Can you explain different concepts from your Spanish class to a friend? Do you study and practice vocab words without being prompted or at home just so that you can build up your fluency? Um, if you answered yes to a lot of those questions, honor Spanish is probably the choice for you next year. Um, or do you sometimes struggle, have a little bit of difficulty forming sentence structure, and need a little bit more support in class? Do you prefer to spend more time in class reviewing and practicing as opposed to doing it on your own at home? Um, and is this your first time in a Spanish class? So if you answered yes to these questions, CP Spanish is probably a good level for you. I see some enthusiastic head nodding. All right. So thank you. So sometimes um, you might think, oh, I'm not really sure. I don't want to be stuck in this um, well, one choice for the rest of high school. You're never stuck. You can always switch from CP to honors back to CP and make choices as you progress at your own pace. Um, we talk a lot about that in our curriculum of um, what kind of jobs are available for artists. You know, it's always kind of a stereotypical, oh, starving artist, you'll never get a job. But, you know, a lot has changed on a lot of careers. I know, Mr. Bailey, you do a field trip to a um, reproduction. Uh, photographic reproduction facility. Yeah, reproduction facility in Greenwich, Rhode Island is Blazing Editions, and all of the artwork that's out in front of the theater entrance, those are all fabricated here by, um, so there's many opportunities. Uh, there's so much in the field of art today that was never available when I was leaving high school or graduating from high school. There's many opportunities today. Well, you know, what's that? Digital as well. I mean, well. you know someone who does the patterns for different fabrics and all of that. Sure.